I'll just keep talking. I'll talk about what I'm thinking about when I see it. We're just gonna go with. We're just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna keep playing. We're just gonna keep playing. We'll see where it goes. I'll see how I'm feeling. Like it's been a long couple of days. Right. Let me know if you need anything. I've seen it all. Okay. Do I have any work to do? Work. Yes. <laughs> Patient transcript. I like these actually, I do like these. You talk about depression, but it doesn't seem to affect your ability to work any hour of day. I treat people who can't even get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is going to be personal to me. There's something about being around people who aren't fucked up that makes me feel makes me a different person, I guess. Maybe I feel like looking weak in front of normal people is the saddest thing that anyone could possibly do. So what changes when you leave? Well, there's nobody around, I guess. And what happens then? I don't know. I find myself at stupid places, doing stupid things. Are you saying that you have no memory of how you get there? No, I remember how. I just Never remember why. Yeah, we'll save now. No. Speaking of which, how did we get here? Okay, so. Okay, we're at a store. I already have a tea that I barely even use. To actually watch TV. That being said, I can't believe how far the plasmas have come. I could get one of these and maybe get maybe getting cable would be worth it. Better than downloading everything. I want to write for television anyway, right? So I should be teaching, watching more television. Four thousand dollars though. That's crazy. I can't. Yeah. Um. No, I'm not going to look at his bank statements again. You know, I really like clothes. It's too bad that none of them fit me. But maybe buying some things that I actually w would want to wear would motivate me to lose weight. It's probably exactly the thing I need to do. You can't... No, sorry. You can't say it doesn't make perfect sense. I don't want to be this way, but it seems like being even more that this way is the only way to stop being like that. Yeah, I know that feeling. I've actually tried that tactic. This is stupid. Why am I here? Why do I do this? I didn't really like any of the genres that any of these new games are in. I guess the reviews for some of them are pretty good though. Buy a video game? Yes. This will be the last time. I don't even like these things anymore. All of them are practically identical to me at this point. This will be the last time. He looks tired. I wonder if he'll ever work the next year. Who knows? Maybe it would be for the best. You think it fucking matters to me? 
think it makes any difference at all. What? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Are you still on this book? Holy crap, this speaker. Turn the headphones off and wait. That's pretty much what I do anyway, so... Doctor, when do you feel the absolute worst? The moment I walk in the door, no question. Sounds like he's playing Skyrim. I don't know why that was the first game that came in my head. Why do you think that is? Why feel worse off when it get home than at any other time? You know, I think our generation is growing up and going down. It's not just in my imagination that things are getting worse. We should all be in a period of our lives where we're building and learning and doing new things. Coming into our own as professionals, making more money and I... Look, we've talked about the, all this before. Um, oh, he's in the bathroom. I don't know. I guess it's all... I guess it just all feels the same. Day in, day out. Except you know that in some way you're falling apart. Well, who isn't? You know, it isn't like I never tried. It's just that all of my trying never really amounted to much, but how many people really change the path they started going down when they started out? And I've got to say I did. <laughs> it's like the fundamental idea of our entire culture that you can change, that you can do whatever you want. And your problem is that what exactly? That nobody is keeping records on how true or untrue that is? Actually, I think they are, but people can't even, I mean, most people can't deal with that kind of hopelessness. Maybe, or maybe they have a way of dealing with it that you just don't know anything about. Do you think I don't know what you keep trying to bring this conversation back around to. I get it. I'm lonely. I'm sad and I'm lonely and this is why I'm in therapy. Are you happy now? Is this what psychiatrics, psychiatrists do? Just keep needling, needling at people until they simplify their problems into something you can write a prescription for? How should I know? You're the one making all of this up. I'm not even real. Okay, this took a sinister turn. You just imagine all of this to try and romanticize being a, a drain circling nobody. You saw a therapist one time. He told you to come back when you had real problems. I'm just like all of the other stupid scenarios that you play out in your head. Like being a creative writing professor or how cool and melancholy you'll be on a talk show. And all of this nonsense, what is it really for? I don't know. It's all to avoid telling yourself that you're nothing. That you're anything more than some fat booze sugar and porn addicted idiot who wasted every opportunity he ever had. Oh 
Okay. It's funny how I was always like this. And yet it got worse at the same time. You know? You live this fucked up type of way. You just slowly coast deeper and deeper into it. Until your whole life is just this weird paradoxical mix of desperate survival and slow killing. Slowly killing yourself at the same time. To be honest, I completely agree with you. I think you should end it. You think? It's either that or you or live a shitty, terrible life. Other people don't want other people to do it. But whose shoes do they have to live in? What the fuck do they know? If you want to live in all of this agony, then you go ahead. But stop telling yourself it's because you still think you could do any better. And start admitting that it's actually because you're too scared to do what you, you know you should. You don't want to inconvenience people. You don't want to make them sad. You want them to remember you as a funny guy to just have around or to keep wishing you could measure up to some fantasy that you should have grown out of 10 years ago. But you don't have anything to look forward to. It's just going to be the same stupid shit every day for the rest of your goddamn life. But you don't have anything. Oh, I'm reading it all over again. Well, <laughs> my, I, I'm gonna deal with this. Okay, hold on. Uh, stop wasting my time. Go to the roof of the building and jump off. No. Fine. But someday you're going to wake up one morning, and even all the things that pulled you down won't make you feel any better. In fact. You won't feel anything at all. And do you know, even know why? Because nobody who isn't obligated to, or who isn't pathetic themselves, even fucking cares that you're alive. In the end, nothing you can do will keep that from sinking in. I know. Years go by. Well, that's a good sign. My character didn't go to the roof. So oh, what? Okay. So hungover. God. I can't take this anymore. I can't take any of it. The same stupid shit. This fucking alarm clock. I fucking hate this shit. Okay. Destroy everything in the apartment. I don't even want to look at this thing. Why did I even buy it? Like, I've even read... I've even read half the books on our... Jeez. Waste of fucking time. Waste of fucking life. Okay. Do I really need an iPad? Can I... Really not apart from the internet. Five goddamn fucking minutes. Alarm clock's shattered. So what? Like I don't have a goddamn alarm clock on my phone. Fucking VIP inbox. Everything in the goddamn universe to keep anybody from getting a goddamn minute of peace. Oh. Press that button by mistake. Big fat fancy chair. For being a fuckhead who never gets off his ass all fucking day. Like I really need to. But just because of my back. Like I've got any good reason to not just be popping pills all the time with the rest of my wretched fucking universe. Like I can't just lay in my fucking bed all night like a goddamn vegetable. What's the difference anyways? I don't even fucking get home before 7pm most nights. 
what the fuck am I getting home for anyway? And I do. To just sit in this fucking chair. Sit in this chair and be to be a fucking jerk off on Facebook and watch YouTube. Because isn't everything just so fucking fascinating? Here was the TV. Flat screen neo yuppie bullshit. Not the PS3. <laughs> All you have to do is destroy everything by Evan Winter. You know, the problem with you is that not that you're gutless raven pussy who can't get off it your ass. No. Your problem is that you have too much stuff. Consumer electronics are your problem. The internet is your problem. All these unbelievable entertaining things and you're just hopelessly addicted to all of them. And that's just why... That's why you need to cancel your home internet. Cancel your high definition cable. Rip apart your $2,000 gaming PC. Throw it in the garbage and leave yourself with nothing but a bunch of crappy, outdated console systems. Because you want to be a different person. A month later you'll be sitting in your blankety blanked out Harmon with nothing to do and you'll finally say to yourself it's time to go get out there in the world I want to meet strangers in cafes I want to join a kickball league but not long after this you'll find yourself playing those crappy outdated consoles every night punching yourself for wrecking your own shit just because you want a different person doesn't mean you will be able to become one Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! Wow, the PS3 took a lot of damage. Holy shit. Like I even need a kitchen. This is Empty. I'll just eat shit like I usually do. Well, oh, speaking of shit. Alcoholic vomit is coolness leaving the body. A lot of fat people think they are hot shit because they drink a lot. They know that nobody in a social situation really wants to talk to them. So they hang out with each other and get totally fucking wasted. Sometimes, if they're rich, funny, a few people will find them endearing enough to actually speak to. By and large, however, they just get completely annihilated and go home and throw up into their cracked seat all of this is an outsider's perspective. The real parts reason fat people drink is because it actually makes them feel confident. And confidence to a 300 pound piece of human shit is all they ever wanted. You, you feel revelation, carelessness, acceptance, and then one day you feel bad enough when you're not drunk that you realize that drinking actually makes you feel the way that you regular people feel all the time. Needless to say, this is when you know it's time to mature into an older and wiser person and switch to antidepressants. No. Sure. You're gonna do this. I'm going to stop drinking, I'm going to quit this job, and I'm going to stop everything. Does he, does he even do anything? Why don't I care anymore? Why don't I care anymore? Go to the roof of the building and jump off. Say, even when you say you refuse to be the creature you are and go on living, it sloshes around in you, your skull like acid, aching from the moment you wake up to the minute you stand still and breathe through the water to the hours you lay in bed at night, shifting through one piece of your 
breaking body to another. You say. You say. You say. You say you won't go on. Not alone. Not like this. You say it isn't human. That it isn't safe. You say it isn't natural to exist in nothing but contemplation of the joy you'll never have. However secure you may be for the moment. <sighs> that too much of you can be undone by the lost and angry person in a single decision. You say you're tired of the pain and sickness you stole that stole your youth. You say you've had enough of waiting to see what part of your mind or body collapses next. You say you won't submit to the incomprehensible object that all of it's slowly turning you into. Target of awkward silence and false hope. A wedding funeral, family asterisk, some careerist article by some careerist asshole on who, how society is in full scale collapse because the government won't pay for your pointless, stupid, un unlivable life. If you say so, you say you won't suck off. This sad and stupid future. You say you won't take another job. Just like the one you just lost. You won't buy the next new cell phone. You won't keep meeting up the same old people who all do the same old things. You say you won't do it. You swear to God you won't do it. So go on. Say it. Say it to yourself. Get drunk and say it to your friends. Say it to someone wish you wish cared about you and actually believe that it makes you look romantic instead of ridiculous. Say it on Twitter, Tumblr, until it's all that anybody believes about who you are. Say it like the world won't go on without you or that you have anything to lose but yourself. Say it for the sake of never doing anything until the day comes when everything you said so much about losing is actually lost. The day that everything you said would happen actually happens. And the only choice left is either something worse. The grinding years of living through it without the heart of anything or nothing at all. When there is nothing left to say. What will you say instead? You know what? Fuck this. I'm fine. I'm going to work. Enough of this bullshit. I'm just going to be different. I'm just going to be fine being myself. It's going to be fine. I can find my own way to being somebody better. With all of that stuff gone, all I have to do now is do something good. Just a day at a time. Someday, this whole part of my life will just be a tiny memory. God, what have I done? All right, before. Before we go to work and see what happens next, I'm going to run some ads. It's been an hour since I ran ads. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to get something. I'm going to drink something just to help my throat and take a little bit of perspective on what I just read. Um, so give me two minutes, guys. I'll be back in two minutes.
Oh, okay. Oh yeah, we're back. We are back. Whew. All right, to work. Um, yeah, sure, we'll just do it again, just to be safe. I am not going to the roof. I'm never going to the roof. Coffee and fruit? Thanks. Have a great day. She must think I'm ridiculous. What kind of person needs to buy us? Simple shit like this off a cart every day. Well, that's her job and you're helping her with a living. You a smoke bud? No, I don't smoke. How? The fucking sun is shining. The fucking birds are singing. You got a, l a look on your face like the fucking world is falling apart. Right? Sure. Meh. Nothing a blowjob and a few million bucks wouldn't fix, huh? Fucking jerk. You know, there's a difference between white guys in the collared shirts who actually get offered that and the ones who don't. Whatever. If you don't... If you don't got a fucking smoke, just fuck off. You know what? I give you money every fucking day. You don't even know who the fuck I am. The fuck is wrong with you? Fuck off. You fuck off. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just getting an argument in the middle of the street. Oh, press the wrong button. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. It's like my worst nightmare right here. A busy. There's a newspaper on the seat, which itself was on top of an unidentified white stain. Ah, oh, really? What else is there to do? Fine. Oh, let's see. There's a guy in a reindeer outfit here. What the hell? Oof, Jesus. There's nobody else to talk to in this. Oh my god, I... I, I feel like I hate fucking crowds like this. I feel uncomfortable fucking scene. Oh, get out of my way, get out of my way, get... Fuck out of my way! Oh, okay, I guess we're sitting on the stain. You're new. What's wrong? I texted you last night. I'm sorry. I didn't get it. Were you alright? You didn't have to go to the hospital, did you? No. You know what? Never mind. I didn't get your message. I didn't even get home until 10 and then I passed out. Fine. You know what? I thought we agreed that the whole thing was just stupid. That it was just... Whatever. It's 9.30 in the morning. Is this really the time or place that you want to talk about this? No. No, you're right. You're stupid. I'm so stupid and I'm... Sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Weird conversation. Okay, so stories that we love. I don't believe for a second that ever cared about me at all. People look at you and me and think we're the same. They don't even know how right they are. They don't even know how much we both wish we could actually be in love. They don't know how we both grew up and thought our lives would be real, that we would get married and talk retirement and read in bed while footsteps crept down the, our hallways. 
They don't know how disgusting we feel when we're together, rubbing all over, rubbing all over each other. Well, you regret it, and I'm trying to think of somebody else. They don't know how reluctant it starts, all indifferent and tiresome. They don't know how stupid we feel when the night wears off and the sun comes up, and we're just laying there, burning off whatever residual intimacy is still hanging in the air, as we, as a weight of trying to make it all less awkward. Shitty kisses and dragging blankets, twisted into each other like sinking life jackets, literally hugging with regret. I am so, so sorry. They probably think we talk about it. Talk it out. They imagine some type of light crystallizes between us. That we start to believe in some beautiful with something beautiful within ourselves because it has to exist. No somebody else can see it. And they do that because we love that story more than anything, don't we? The idea that we can transcend our ugliness through sheer force of honesty. That we can magically transform into a writhing pile of fat, desperate bodies with power to fuck and suck the complete bullshit out of each other. Because that will be the thing that sets us free from wanting someone that we actually want. Because that will be the thing that will make all of the mistakes we've made just a part of something that was meant to be. Because we are so horrific that we really want someone not to love us, not to need us, but to forgive us for being so wretched. They really think that. And why not? After all, it's the only way that everybody might actually have a chance. Except they don't. And I don't. And you don't. And we don't. So stop looking at me like that. You don't. Didn't know what this was. Well. Ah. Evan, you got to help me. I can't keep up anymore. Slow down, man. What happened? I wanted... I went to them and asked them why they basically handed Russell my promotion. And you know what they said? Whatever they said, it's bullshit. They put Russell in there because he's an evil buck. Buck-passing little shithead. Perfect for their first ever layer of middle management. Don't sweat it tell you what they told me. They said I need to step it up. So I've been here until 9 every night stepping it up. But it's impossible. And you know and now Tori is leaving? Who do you think is going to end up with all her work? Me. Troy, stop. Are you even listening to what you're saying? There's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter. I'm not as stupid as you think, Evan. You think I don't know what you're saying? Of course I do. But it's easy for you. You get the luxury of being right. You're paying even more for divorce lawyers than you are in child support. Doesn't mean it's not a waste of your time, man. Damn it! All I'm saying is that you can't expect that promotion now that Russell's in there. I mean, it's done. He's got it. And it's not like they're even around to see how fucked up he is. So, wouldn't count on him losing it. Promotion? Who the heck are you talking about promotion? They're gonna fire me. That's why you gotta help me with some stuff. I'm begging you. They're gonna fire you, man? You're the most experienced person here. They need, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say, man. But, you can't live like this. Fine, don't help me. You just wait 10 years, see if the word, the word career even means anything to you. Or if you find yourself dusting off the re res resume every 6 months because everybody wants some hire some 23 year old. I didn't say I wouldn't help you. 23 year old who could pump a million miles of dog shit an hour 
because they don't even know it's shit. And the client doesn't care because they've never seen anything but shit. Well, it's not all bad. At least you don't have a huge commute anymore. Or payments on that house out there. I miss that house every day of my life. I miss my wife. I miss my kids. I miss everything. I miss everything about all of it. I don't want to talk about this. Please excuse me. <sighs> there is a lot of rain in this game. I did not realise this. <laughs> Your free trial is about to end every winter. You do realise that the kind of life which only happened to other people for the most of your ex existence is coming for you too, right? Sure, it all makes sense now. It's just a graph on a page, just a short-term contract instead of a full-time job, just a little le leaning into what you are otherwise told is a very healthy retirement fund for a person who got paid to tell you that. But someday, so someday, someone is going to fire you for the last time. Not because you did anything wrong, not because you ran off to open some goddamn cupcake store, and not even because they actually can't afford to keep you. It's simply because your life got too complex and expensive for what is actually worth to anyone but you. If you don't become either rich or in charge of a bunch of people by the time you're 40, you may as well blow your fucking brains out all over the world. Uh, out all the world will think of you. Even at 35, you'd better still be sexy. You don't even know all this will come together by the time you're 30. You've already, you're already so far behind ever somebody who doesn't, does that, who does that, I can see how someone who doesn't would ever catch up. And then, for the sake of our collective sanity, you will be erased because nobody can give a fuck about you if you don't exist to be to give a fuck about I mean look at you you're old you're bringing down our Friday spirit you can't drink all night you aren't fun to look at and you can't help anybody get ahead with anything you're upsetting all the 20 something who don't even get paid don't think the least we can do is provide them with a workplace that resembles a television show. And no offence, but if you have kids who don't get to go to daycare because you didn't marry rich, nobody wants to know about that. If, excuse me, if you have some disease that's eating you alive because you have no medical coverage, it's better for everybody if you don't see it. So don't think you have you can be cheerful or at least quiet I hope you know how much we all resent you for being here wow because this is not a place that has anything to do with anything but celebration celebrating success driving forward with growth powering ahead through innovation and smashing through it with remorseless jeu de verre whatever I, I don't speak French though so. <laughs> Who would seriously consider even being anywhere else? And maybe, just maybe, you used to understand that back when you were some sort of loser cocoon. Still all bright with your maybes and some days. All you do, no, all you do now is remind everyone that nothing lasts forever. Who wants to think like that? Um, did, I, did I check the trash can? I don't know. You first. Yeah? Hey Elsa. Go I talk to Russell today. Is he in his office until 5? Probably. I don't know. I thought they made Russell general manager. He fired Natasha because he said she couldn't speak English. At which point, of course, he simply replaced her with somebody who refused to. 
the rest of us would complain probably. Except she isn't even really supposed to help all of us the way that Natasha did anyways. She's strictly supposed to be Russell's executive assistant. And of course, you can see where all this is headed. We figure that they're already at least made out. The only job she actually doing here is telling him everything that she thinks we're saying about him. Not that we aren't saying it. Hey, what's going on? Hey, not much. <sighs> ah, is this your last day or are you coming in for the last handoff meeting next week? No, I can't. Me and Danny are going on our engagement trip tomorrow. And then I start the new job as soon as I get back. That's too bad. We were really a team on that. I, I know the client liked us together. They'll understand. It's just a job. Yeah. They'll forget about us before you know it. Damn, Troy. Tori, you sound more like me every day. After all this time together, that's not what I wanted. I know it. I didn't see you out last night. We should have a drink after work. I mean, we should go all go. I don't think that's a good idea. Anyways, you're a really talented guy, so good luck, Evan. Yeah, you too. Uh, the way people walk away from you. If love exists in the ability to make another person happy, how can someone who can't make anybody happy ever really be in love? How do you tell someone who asks you why you never do anything that the reason is that you can feel your bones grinding together when you walk? How do you tell someone who asks why you're so tired that you can't sleep without pain? How do you tell someone who only smiles at you when you make them laugh that there isn't so much more you want to say? How can you look at photos on her desk of someone giving her everything she wants and not be thankful that somebody can? How sick have you become that you don't realise that not everything is about you? If love exists and the ability to make another person happy, how can someone who can't make anybody happy ever really be in love? If love exists and the ability to make another person happy, how can someone who can't make anybody happy ever really be in love? How? 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 Oops, I pressed the wrong button. I apologize. I guess I'm going to need Russell. 